So to find the derivative, we can use the power rule. The negative 2 comes down, and everything on the inside stays the same. We are going to use the chain rule, but the chain rule doesn't say take the derivative of the inside at the same time. But the negative 2 went down, and then the power got reduced by 1. And then we multiply by the derivative of the innermost function. So the derivative inside here is negative 15x squared, from what we learned before. So cleaning that up a bit, uh, negative 2 times negative 15 is going to give me 30x squared. And then I'll move this to the denominator to make the power positive. So that's all to the third power. And they also want to know the domain of f of x. So look, f of x, it's written with a negative exponent, but that's the same as 1 over 4 minus 5 x to the third, all to the second power. That's an equivalent way of writing this. And so the domain are all the values where we wouldn't have a divide by 0 problem or a square, square root of a negative. So we want to find out what it would take to give us a divide by 0 problem. So set the denominator equal to 0. And you could put the square in there if you want, but your first step would be just to square root both sides. So that would cancel out the square, subtract that 4 from both sides, divide negative 5 from both sides, so that's negative 4 over negative 5, and then take a cube root of both sides. So if x is the cube root of 4 fifths, then we're going to have a divide by 0 problem. So the domain of f of x would be everything except this value negative infinity up to the cube root of four-fifths. And I don't know if WebAssign wanted decimals or not, so you want to check out what they're asking for there. And then we can pick up the domain starting to the right of the cube root of four-fifths to positive infinity. So that's the domain. Now the domain of the derivative uh, will do the same type of thing. We want to avoid divide by zero problems. We want to avoid square roots of a negative. And if you want to find a divide by zero problem, you'd set the, de the denominator equal to zero, and we're going to get the same thing. Oh, sorry, um, one thing I just noticed up here. Well, no, that's still the same. OK, we're still good. I was thinking about squaring, but it's not going to change your answer, because if you square root both sides, you'd have positive or negative zero, which you know, it doesn't matter. Zero is neither positive nor negative. Um, and we're doing the same thing down here. So the domain is just going to be the of uh, the derivative is going to be the same thing. They're both uh, this right here, okay? Because if you set this equal to zero and solve, we're solving the same exact equation. So, um, so I just checked. Um, WebAssign doesn't write an interval notation. Re WebAssign writes it writes it like this: x cannot be the cube root of four fifths. It's the same thing, just in a different different setup. Okay, that's the domain. X is not cube root of four fifths. Uh, the last part of the question said, when does this function have horizontal tangents for what x values? <clears throat> so to do that with calculus, we set the derivative equal to zero. So if we set this derivative equal to zero, we want to multiply both sides. Oh, sorry. So <clears throat> we're finding critical points. One piece that I want to mention, I should mention, is that critical points happen where the derivative fails to exist, which we already solved. The derivative fails to exist here, or where the derivative equals 0. But if we multiply this to both sides, we get 0 equals 30x squared. If you divide both sides by 30 and take a square, square root of both sides, you get x equals 0. And so that's where the graph is going to have a horizontal tangent. Uh, sorry, my bit about critical points, that would be for finding maxes or mins. We're looking for just horizontal tangents, so you don't even need to worry about that part. This is the only place where there's a horizontal tangent.